Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. And today I have back with me our very sweet and my favorite guest, Shanati. I welcome you, Shanati. Namaste. Namaste, Navjeet. It's such an honor and pleasure to be here with you, my old friend and sister. And I'm so looking forward to doing this collaborative effort with my channel, Shanati Joshis and Dr. Arjun Pai Astrology. Um, it's very exciting. Um, to discuss, we're going to be discussing Jupiter in Taurus for each and every ascendant. I will also be covering uh, Jupiter through the nakshatra, which will include Kritika nakshatra, Rohini nakshatra, and Mrigashir nakshatra. So I'm very much looking forward to this elaboration. Uh, we'll see where we go. It might take two parts. It might take three parts. Uh, but I'll make sure for all of the uh, viewers that we cover every ascendant and all of the nakshatra. Uh, for the Taurus position. Um, I would Thank like- Thank you. Oh, it's my honor and pleasure. This is so exciting. I, I am really gleeful. For those of you that don't know, I'm coming back from a grief and loss. My uncle Durgadas, who's a Kirtanwala uh, and, and introduced me to Sanskrit and Jyotish and Hinduism and helped me convert to Hinduism when I was a teenager, uh, he has passed away. And so I have been grieving for some time um, but it is so nice after a couple months of, of grieving and preparing for his uh, transition to Svarga uh, that I am able to come back and, and, and be with you now. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here, Samit. So I'm just going to open with a quick chant uh, to the planet Jupiter, uh, Brihaspati, uh, the answer of uh, wishes, the answer of prayers. Also Guru Deva, it's called the Guru of the Gods. Uh, and then I will uh, share some information about how this transit will go uh, and how long it will last. And then we will go through every ascendancy. Devinam cha, Devinam cha, Gurum Kanchana Sanibam, Buri Butam Trilogsham, Tam Namami Brahaspatim, Devinam cha, Risnam cha, Gurum Kanchana Sanibam, Buri Butam Trilogsham, Tam Namami Brahaspatim, Devinam cha, Risnam cha, Gurum Kanchana Sanibam, Buri Butam Chalokham, Tam Namami Braspatim, Om Gram Grim Gram Saha Guru Deva Nama, 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 Ariom, Om Namashibaya. Namaskaram. Oh. What happened with Mercury? It's good. Not to sure. Sorry. It. Well, with Mercury retrograde just ending, sometimes we will have little blips of the Mercury retrograde still showing up. So that's okay. Um, <laughs> so first thing I want to discuss um, is uh, how Jupiter will be traveling through Taurus uh, over the next year or so. Um, so. First, I will discuss how, um, if you can see this little uh, graph on the right here, this is used the ephemeris, which is the uh, calendar for how the planets will be traveling. So on May 1st, we see that Jupiter will actually be leaving uh, Aries and entering Taurus. So we um, will be entering Taurus on next Wednesday, uh, which is the 1st of May. I'm very excited for this transit personally because my Jupiter is on the tour side of Kritika, so I'll be having my Jupiter return, uh, which is, no. yeah, I'm excited about that. It's been quite some time since Jupiter has returned in my chart. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited for this transit. But one of the things that you'll notice is that on quickly after it enters Taurus on the third, uh, even though we'll be in Kritika Nakshatra, because it is a uh, Kritika Nakshatra is a cusp Nakshatra, which means it falls at the end of Aries and the beginning of Taurus. But on Friday, which is May 3rd, it will be close to the sun, which means the sun will be combusting the Jupiter. So even though it enters this position of the uh, Taurus, 
it will be combusted by the sun, which means it will be burning up a little bit of the Jupiter. But we know that the sun and Jupiter are our friends. So the combustion is not as harmful to Jupiter as it is to some of the other planets. Um, but that does mean that some of the gifts of this position, of the Jupiter-Taurus position, uh, which in general has a lot to do with uh, being uh, very giving. There's a lot of giving energy. We call this selflessness. We call this altruism. We call this our devotion uh, to our uh, guru, our devotion to the divine. It's what we have to offer others, what we have to offer divine gifts to, uh, not just through our prayer, through our sadhana, but also what we have to offer our brothers and sisters on this planet. What kind of gifts can we offer them? I mean, a lot of times when we think of guru, uh, which is Jupiter's energy. Uh, we think of, you know, perhaps Mata Amritananda Maima or Satguru Baba Nim Karoli Baba. Um, but not all gurus take that form, right? Sometimes our gurus are just our friends. Sometimes our gurus are our parents. Sometimes our gurus are our children, you know? And this is a very important thing to understand about Jupiter and Taurus is that very often the Jupiter and Taurus position, while it is helpful for the receiving gifts of our uh, spiritual guru, right? The divine guru. It's also receiving gifts from those teachers in our life that are not particularly recognized as gurus, right? But we can recognize them as gurus. And I'm receiving a chill because they're giving us these divine gifts. When we see everything that our loved ones are giving us as divine gifts, we can really receive and appreciate that blessing which they're offering us. Um, the combustion will just mean that when this position comes, sometimes those give, gifts that our uh, divine brothers and sisters, our family members, our loved ones are offering us, it takes time to appreciate them. Sometimes we get frustrated by our family members, right? Because we spend so much time with them, they can get a little irritated, we can get a little annoyed. And that is why Jupiter and Taurus can sometimes be considered an enemy position. Uh, specifically, uh, Kritika Nakshatra has a strong ancestral energy. Uh, so this has to do with uh, really receiving gifts through the ancestral lineage as it goes through Kritika Nakshatra. But again, it doesn't mean we can't get frustrated by our mothers. We can't get frustrated by our fathers, our brothers, sisters, friends. Even the guru, even the guru can sometimes be frustrating when we don't get the answer that we want to from our guru. I don't know how many times I have asked Dhamma uh, a specific question, uh, yearning for a specific answer. And that answer is I receive is not what I was expecting. And so we, we sometimes work through this energy and we come to surrender to the guru's grace and we surrender our will to the divine will, to God's will. But when our will is brought into that situation, it can be quite troubling. So um, that's the May position. And if we look at um, the June position for, um, for uh, Jupiter and Taurus, you can see here that it will actually leave the combustion. It will leave the combustion on Sunday, June 2nd. So you're looking at about one month in the combustion uh, and it will be leaving also Kritika Nakshatra and it'll be entering Rohini Nakshatra at this time. And when we mm -hmm. enter the Rohini Nakshatra, we know this is the moon's favorite Nakshatra. Um, and, and Jupiter has that real blessing of uh, offering gifts in this position of Jupiter and Taurus. And I really believe when Jupiter enters Rohini and it leaves out of this combustion space, that is the most fruitful time for us to receive the gifts. Like I said, it takes time for us to get used to how those gifts will manifest because sometimes those gifts in our life aren't what we expect. In other words, uh, there's an old saying, uh, you know, uh, and a Rolling Stones song, uh, you, you don't always get what you want, but sometimes you might get what you need. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Uh, so after that, um, there's no real significant changes uh, until if you look here in October, uh, uh, that says uh, uh, October 9th. So again, we have this consistent transit through the whole summer, through the whole summer of where Jupiter is in this Rohini position. And as it starts to near Mrigashira position, and again, the Mrigashira position is the Kusnak Chatra, which blends the Taurus and Gemini. Uh, when you start to look at this October position of 27th, right before it really starts to saturate in the Mrigashira energy, it goes Vakri. It goes in a retrograde position. So that will be, um, again, a little bit of a challenge. Uh, but again, my Jupiter is retrograde, also Vakri and Taurus as well. So again, I'm not particularly, I'm particularly looking forward to this. But again, 
if we look at this energy of receiving the gifts from the guru, from our teachers, from our loved ones, you know, when we receive a gift and appreciating that gift uh, and feeling that gift as a blessing is a huge part of the energy. But how about giving back? How about, how do we give back when we receive a gift? And I really think that's what the Jupiter and Taurus retrograde retrogression energy is all about because it's one thing to receive a gift. It's another thing to reciprocate that gift by offering your own blessing. I mean, one of the things personally with my Jupiter retrogression and Taurus in my fourth Baba, I've come to understand that this will create an energy in which I really want to give gifts to other people, whether it's some chocolate, uh, whether it's a you know free consultation on their chart. This is an energy I can't help myself with. Uh, so that giving energy back is really important when we look at this retrogression. And so it's a great opportunity for you to give back and to be of service, whether that's to the guru or to your life. Now, this retrogression it will continue until February. Uh, if you look at February of next year, this retrogression will end in the Rohini position uh, at the 17th degree of Jupiter. Uh, when you're looking at this uh, uh position of the retrogression ending, we're looking at, it's only one retrogression in Taurus this time around. So when we look at this retrogression ending, uh, you know, now it's time to start being appreciative and receiving those gifts again. So again, I really think this energy of being humble and allowing yourself to receive the gifts that are offered to you and being appreciative for them, but then when the retrogression ends, it's that is what the energy is invoking. Because again, life is a two-way street, right? We give and we receive, you know? We give and we receive. And if we're blocked spiritually, whether it's in giving gifts or receiving gifts, we're gonna deal with spiritual and karmic consequences. And that is why actually Jupiter is considered enemy position in Taurus. It's Jupiter in Taurus is a beautiful position, right? You know, but if we can't appreciate the gifts that we receive and if we can't offer gifts to others, it can actually create a lot of karmic challenges and a lot of consequences. So it's very important that we be a clear vessel so that we can properly see and appreciate what the divine is trying to show us through the divine will. May we surrender our will at this time. Uh, then we find this is the final direct position where Jupiter will be leaving the position of Taurus and entering the position of Gemini on the 14th of May next year. So this transit is perhaps just a little over one year long. It's 12 month and some odd days. Uh, so uh, I hope everyone is excited for that and enjoy the looking at the ephemeris to kind of understand how long and how significant and some of the general powerful energies, uh, you know, because as Jupiter starts to enter that Mrigashira position, which is the cusp, it really begins seeking. So after this time of receiving and giving gifts, both through the divine and through our loved ones, then we may can then we must be seeking. We must be seeking the divine even more because when we receive gifts from the divine, we appreciate God's love for us. So then we continue to seek the divine. We continue to seek God in this beautiful way, and I think that's one of the beautiful positions of, of Jupiter and Rigashir. Um, I do believe it does uh, better on the Taurus side than the Gemini side. And, and, and Nav and I will, will do another video on, on Jupiter and Gemini when that comes around. So I hope everyone appreciated that discussion of the transit. And now we'll look a little bit more at Jupiter through each and every ascendancy. Thank you, Shanati. That was really wonderful through each nakshatras and just explaining where we're really receiving and how it will behave in different nakshatras. So thank you. It's my honor and pleasure. Uh, you know, I, I feel like Jupiter and its relationship with Venus can be really misunderstood, you know? And so this is a beautiful position, actually. Um, but again, Venus as the Asoria uh, guru and Jupiter as the Guru Deva, that energy in combination will create karmic retribution or consequences if we don't appreciate those gifts and give back as well, right? Because when we receive, it's our, op it's our, I would say duty, it's our dharma to give. Um, so for the Aries ascendancy uh, or Lugnesh, it's very important to understand that Jupiter will be entering the position on the second bhava. Now, the second bhava, for those, you know, for, for a very long time now, 
for the Aries ascendant as Jupiter has been ascending. So that creates uh, an energy where now the Aries ascendant has kind of aligned to their guru self, hopefully, um, if they are connected to their dharma and they have invoked and deepened their spiritual relationship with the divine. Now, that is beautiful, right? That's such a, such a blessing and such a positive energy. Um, but we know that when we focus on our spiritual life, sometimes we can have challenges in the financial area of our life. Sometimes we can have challenges in the career area of our life. So when Jupiter now is offering and entering the second bhava, it's giving this opportunity for all of the Aries ascendancies to start to make some money. So uh, this is okay. You know, it's really good. But it's, again after this spiritual awakening for the Aries ascendant, it could be a little bit challenging saying, oh, well, now I need to focus on my job. Now I need to focus on how to make the money. And Jupiter will be offering this blessing to make it so when you put uh, a little bit in the savings, let's say $10, $20, $50, and you make $100, whatever it is, when you put 10%, 20%, 50% of that money into savings account, this is creating a very powerful and positive energy with, with this Jupiter entering the second Baba, because one of the most amazing things about this position is the opportunity to save and increase the finances uh, for the Aries Ascendant during this time might be one of the most favorable times in the whole rotation of Jupiter uh, around the chart for the Aries Ascendant. Uh, so it's very important that for the Aries Ascendancy that we put a little bit of money away uh as well because this is also an opportunity like i said to give as it transits through all of the positions yes we're putting the money away 10 percent, 20 percent, 50 percent of what we make into savings account and again i'm not necessarily suggesting investing or anything like that at this time for the aries ascendant because the second house really likes to give its rewards when we save uh, the the fruits of our efforts or save the income from our work that we do. And hopefully that work is dharmic and aligns to the guru self within ourselves, because otherwise we might not have this opportunity to create this lucrative energy for the Aries Ascendant. Um, but it's also about giving back. So again, if you're giving 20% to the savings, you must give 20% to the guru. You must give 20% to the ashram. You must give 20% to, you know, um, what is the charity of your choice? Because again, this is altruism. This is an altruistic energy when she put her enters the Taurus position. Greediness will not serve the Aries ascendancy during this time. Like I said, you don't want to put too much money away because if you give uh, 20% to the savings, and you give 20% to the guru, how much do you have left to pay your rent? How much do you have left to get all the food that you like to get? Like the Panir Tikka Masala I'll be having this evening. <laughs> so it's very important to understand this energy. Um, now, we also know that there's going to be a strong activation of the Sagittarius energy through Jupiter's position in, in, in Taurus. Jupiter will be acting the Sagittarius energy, which will be the ninth bhava. The ninth bhava is Jupiter's favorite bhava, nine and four. Um, and so when we see this position of Jupiter activating in the ninth bhava through that Sagittarian energy, we will say that even though it's important to say even though it's important to make money and there's many opportunities for money making during this time, if it is not aligned to our guru self, if it is not aligned to our moral and ethical potential, then perhaps we will lose money. Like I said, this is a beautiful position when we are aligned to what the divine will wants for us. But when we assert our will on the situation and are willing to compromise the moral and ethics, this will create a karmic retribution. So the Aries Ascendant needs to be careful that they are not compromising anything for the money making. And this includes that it's very important, as I mentioned, to give back to the guru, but it's very important the development of the sadhana through this time. You know, it's very important that they be chanting, that they be praying every day in the religion of their choosing, right? Um, I think that it's very important that they... Uh, see that the blessings they're receiving, they don't inflate the ego. Because when the ego becomes inflated, we know that Kali and Indra and Shiva will come here and squash it. So it's very important to understand, especially as it transits through this Kritika position. It can be very challenging at this cusp position in the early part. And in addition, I mentioned the combustion as the sun passes through it. 
So it's it's very key it's, during this time to not compromise our moral and ethical values. And sometimes it's hard to understand that that will increase our financial prosperity. But I promise that if we say our patient, right, because Saturn is still in Aquarius. And, and as I'm when it goes through the retrogression, both Saturn and Jupiter will be in retrogression again at the same time. Uh, and if you look at the last time Saturn and Jupiter went retrogression at the same time, it was the peak of the pandemic. Um, so it's very important to understand that the morals and ethics during this time are key and instrumental in the evolution of the individual. And so we can't say, oh, well, we need to walk on other people's back. You know, I'm all for, you know, uh, people's financial freedom. I mean, I'm sure if you've uh, watched my videos, you know that. Um, but capitalism can be great in that opportunity to offer financial freedom. But it's also sometimes where we step on other people's back so that we can get higher in our position, in our money. That is not going to work well for the Aries ascendancy this time. There will be karmic retribution and the ego will be squashed. And we can see this as a double confirmation of that energy when you look at the Pisces activating the 12th Bhava for the Aries ascendancy. When you see that activation of the 12th Bhava, it's really about um, being humble because as we start to accumulate some of this success, some of these gifts, also we will incur some losses, May, perhaps not financial losses. Sometimes I look at death in the eighth house. So it's not necessarily financial losses that I'm seeing at this time. Uh, but I am seeing perhaps, uh, you know, um, the loss of our homes, the loss of, you know, elder members of our family. Um, so in that process, you know, that's very humbling as well. And I just went through this personally, um, that when we kind of surrender in that process, the divine really picks us up. You know, I like to think of this activation of the 12th house for the Aries ascendancy. If you've ever done one of those trust exercises where you cross your uh, arms like this and you lean back. That's what we're supposed to be doing in the hands of the guru. That's what we're supposed to be doing in the hands of the divine. So it's a real opportunity uh, to kind of, right? We have the, the Jupiter, the Aries ascendant has the wisdom because Jupiter has been ascending for quite some time. But now we must live that wisdom. We must surrender. We must fall back in the hands of the divine. And as long as we are trying our best and doing the right thing each and every day, we need to be patient because pattern again is in its mulatry cone. So at, we need to be patient as we surrender into the hands of the divine, as we fall back and know that it is the divine will, whatever we are going through, and that we will be taken care of materially, financially. The last thing I want to mention, some kind of accessory things about the Aries ascendancy during this time. Again, that second house is the house of the mouth. So when we speak wisdom, we must speak the wisdom uh, we must communicate the wisdom, which means how often do we have a thought about what we should say? Perhaps for me in the Jupiter and Taurus energy, I sometimes have, like to have funny jokes, but that doesn't mean the funny joke is appropriate because not everyone receives that joke with humor because people can be very stringent. People can be very austere. People can be very serious. So we have to come to understand as well what is appropriate at any given time through our communication. And are we expressing things appropriately and helping people align to their guru self? Or are we still inappropriate with our verbal communication? Are we still, and so that's important to understand. And this includes the foods that we eat and just, you know, really being more watchful and careful about what we put in our mouth and what comes out of it, both in food and speech. So uh, again, that's, I want to give each ascendant equal time. So, uh, that's all I will share for the Aries ascendancy for now. Um, and I hope that was helpful for all you Aries ascendants or Lugnash out there. So now I'd be discussing the Taurus position. Um, here we go, Taurus, North and South. Okay, great. So as I look at this position, um, we see that it's ascendant. Now for the Taurus ascendant, uh, when it, well, listen, Jupiter loves the first house as well. I know I mentioned it loves the fourth and nine, but it also loves ascending, right? They even say, uh, Parashara says that 
the Jupiter, when it's ascending, no matter negative position in chart, it will be corrected. So the Jupiter has this ability as the Guru Deva to kind of bless the entire chart and ascendancy. So when you're looking at this Taurus ascendancy, this Taurus Lagnesh, we can experience this beautiful energy of really kind of finally a lot of the challenges that we're experiencing being removed, being revoked. Because when Jupiter is blessing the whole chart, no matter the challenge, the Guru is blessing it. So this is a very powerful position. Um, this also has some uh, interesting aspects to it. Because one of the things that we see when Guru Deva is ascending is that Guru is Kapha planet. Guru is Kapha planet. And uh, so one of the things that you'll see is the growth of an individual. Uh, and we can see this expansion through that Kapha energy. So that includes the spiritual expansion. That includes the material expansion. I mean, this is a very strong blessing for the Taurus ascendancy through all of the nakshatra. Um, However, we could also see the physical expansion. And one of the things that the Taurus Ascendant, they love uh, good food, uh, they love good vacation, they love good experiences. Uh, and when the Jupiter is in the Ascendant position, they can have vulnerability to be indulgent. Uh, and I appreciate indulgence. I, you know, I love good food and I love beaches and I love good vacation, uh, especially when it's with my loved ones. But again, if there's too much indulgency, this is what we call hedonism, which means we are obsessed with pleasure. We put our pleasure before our relationship with God. We put our pleasure before our relationship with others. So it's very, very important that even though this is a very expansive time and we'll be blessing the chart in almost every house because of the Jupiter ascendancy, it's also important to understand that we need to not be too indulgent over this time, right? There is a balance of moderation. Uh, and if we can't moderate, right? Some people can't moderate certain things. You know, people are addicted to tobacco. People are addicted to coffee. You know, people uh, sometimes, you know, have these troubles with moderation. If you have the trouble with moderation, there is no better time to quit something. There is no better time to quit something than this time. So again, uh, moderation and, and discernment in our actions is highly encouraged, but where we can't moderate, we must be austere and we must eliminate. And that's an important thing to understand here as well. Now, uh, this is, again, encouraged and, and affirmed by the ninth position, Sagittarius being in the eighth bhava. The eighth bhava, uh, as my friend Simon Chikoisi, he likes to say, it's the house of uh, death, sex, drugs and things like this and in like a position because again oh, it's on one side of this guru Davis energy ascending you have this potential for so much austerity right the eighth house is also our mystical potential so if we're chanting if we're meditating every day if we're very devoted to our sadhana this might be one of the most beneficial times for us, right? There's that higher side of the Guru Deva energy, which really helps us line up yes. to the Guru's yes. for us. But it, during this time, the, the Taurus Ascendant can have glimpses of the Samadhi. They can have glimpses of, uh, you know, direct communion with their Guru, Darshana. You know, they can receive that blessing, that transmission from the Guru that helps them align to their higher self. But again, if we're not giving these gifts, if we're not receiving these gifts, if we're concerned with our own selfish desire, then this is another Mustana Baba, which will create losses. We can incur losses. We can incur debt. So it's very important to understand. And, and I hope you can see this, uh, that the Jupiter in Taurus position is really a double-edged sword. There is this kind of energy where it's like, okay, well, if we align to the guru's will, if we align to the guru within ourselves, if we take our advice from our spiritual teachers, and guru, you know, um, it can be one of the most powerful times for blessings and wealth and good times with the family. And, you know, it's aspecting the seventh house. So there's romantic and marriage potential for the Taurus ascendancy here as well. But we must be very careful with um, that with the eighth house, we're not gambling. 
We're not, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, uh, using any mind altering substances, you know, um, you know, so part of this pleasure seeking expansion can, can increase the energy of what we like to use shortcuts, but shortcuts are never beneficial spiritually. We must take the long road to God. If we try to take short road to God, then we will end back where we started. So it's very important that here that we are patient, again, Saturday in Tricona, uh, to allow the blessings of God's will to incur in our life. Otherwise, this could be a challenging uh, And I want to protect everyone from any addiction or TD, debt from gambling. Those are things that the Taurus ascendant should stay away from, like it is burning fire next to their hands. So very important to understand. Also, Jupiter will be activating the 11th Bhava. The activation of the 11th Bhava here um, will be a very, very strong energy in which it is supportive of friendship because the, this will help people, as I mentioned, be very giving. This is a very giving energy. And part of what giving is, is, is to our friends. This 11th house is called the house of friendship. I like to call it the house of allies, the Bhava of allies, because what is a true friend? It's an ally, someone who wants what's best for us, someone who is not selfish to support us, to give back to us. Um, so it's, it's very, very important to understand this position uh, and know that it's about the development and the improvement of our relationship with all our friends. Because as we expand, as we receive the gifts of the guru and increase our moral and ethical potential, it is selfish to just keep that to ourselves. So who do we want to give it to? Jupiter aspect the seventh house and we give it to our, our, our partner. Jupiter aspect the 11th house. And so we give it to our friends, to our allies in this life because that reciprocal yes. relationship of giving to our allies and then receiving the blessings of okay. our allies, which is really just about having our back, right? I mentioned crossing our hands and falling back. Well, for the Taurus ascendancy, it's falling back into the hands of our friends. The 11th house is also a position in which we receive uh, recognition for our hard-earned efforts. And so it's very important for the Taurus ascendancy uh, that they understand that recognition is a beautiful thing and you will receive recognition during this time, but don't let it go to the ego and when we will receive the recognition. We must be humble. One of the things I notice about guru in gen general, but especially because I have this position of Jupiter and so on, that if we're not humble, then whatever we God has given us, God may take it away. This is almost like a K2 energy. So you must understand <laughs> that this position, uh, it will support uh, all of the rewards which we've been yearning for. And you can see Saturn will be also in the 10th house at this time uh, and through most of this transit, which will support the career development for the Taurus ascendancy. Um, but because of the 11th Bhava activation, unless we are willing to be humble and give back with all of the things that we receive, then they may be taken away as well. And we can see this through the Dusana Bhava uh, activation of the 8th house. Um, Navji, do we have time for one more ascendant today? Sure, we can do one more. Okay, great. Uh, so in the next video, we will go Cancer uh, through uh, Scorpio. And then in the final video, we can do Sagittarius through Pisces. And I can give a little bit of inclusion uh, about the nakshatra position uh, for everybody. Um, so again, uh, thank you all. I'm excited to discuss this uh, Gemini Matuna position. Um, when we look at this Gemini position, uh, we see that Jupiter is going into the 12th Baba. Now, when Jupiter goes into the 12th house, this is actually a fantastic and wonderful position. I love 12th house activation. Of all the Dustana Bhava, you know, eighth can be very challenging uh, depending on the planet. 12th can be very challenging. And even the fourth house is a moksha house. And that's where my Jupiter, I will be learning spiritual lessons over this time as well. When you look at the Jupiter in the 12th house, this is a incredible potential for the person to really kind of transform their life um, and create a balance in all of the areas. 
Um, but we know that the Matuna, uh, the Gemini ascendancy could be quite intellectual. It could be quite logical. Um, and this is an opportunity yeah. for them to let go of the buddhi, right? Let go of the discretionary factor of our consciousness. That which is, is always analyzing. That's what is always computating. That which is always calculating. This is very helpful, you know, in general, right? There's so much intelligence for Gemini. There's so much social uh, acumen here. So much positive energy in that area. But if we think too hard, I always say our brain will break. Sometimes people are too smart. Is what I like to say. Uh, I know, so it's very important to know that sometimes we must let go of this part of our mind, which is always analyzing. And through that letting go, we can achieve great spiritual heights. There is the potential here to achieve great spiritual heights for the Gemini ascended. But as you can see, Ketu and Rahu on Kendras. When Ketu and Rahu is on Kendras like this, and we it will be there for the entirety of the Jupiter transit, as we know Ketu and Rahu retrogressions very slowly. This creates an energy in which Ketu in the fourth bhava and Jupiter in the 12th bhava, double moksha activation. So through this double moksha activation, we must be able to let go of our attachments. One of the th things that Jupiter and Taurus represents is our attachments. One of the greatest lessons I've had to learn about my life in Jupiter and Taurus is to let go of my attachments because the stronger the attachment is, we know that the divine will says it's great to have something and appreciate it, but ultimately we can't take that with us. We would like to take our partner with us to heaven. We would like to take our friends and our family. We would like to do all of this. That's not how it works. And so coming to this conclusion and accepting it and surrendering it and what I call turning it over. When you give this energy away, uh, the, the divine will answer back with blessings. So it's, it's very important for the Gemini Ascendant that they cannot be too attached during this time. Well, well, a lot of the areas that our attachment are in these Kendras here because of K2, our attachment to our home. So the, the Gemini Ascendant should be prepared to let go of their home, their physical location at this time. Um, and then the seventh house. Now this, I, I, I don't want to, you know I'm not negative. I don't like to be negative at all. I like to focus on the positives. But we must be honest about the activation of moksha here and it's and the activation of the seventh house, which is the house of the partner. I'm not saying if you're married, you're going to get divorced as a Gemini ascendancy during this time. But it is something to consider, right? Because we are aligning to that guru self. When we go through this guru self, Hopefully our partner's coming with us, right? Because when we surrender to God's will, uh, then God will, God's will takes us on this beautiful train to experiencing the divine blessings. However, what if our partner is not there with us? What if our partner does not appreciate that we're letting go of our attachments? What if our partner does not move because we want to move? What if our partner you know, is we stop, you know, someone is stopping the drinking, someone is dropping the drink, smoking, but the partner is still doing it. That is toxic. We must follow the partner. The partner must follow you to the letting go of your attachments, or it may not be the most fruitful time for the marriage. Now, again, as I mentioned, the Jupiter and Tor uh, Taurus energy is a double-edged sword. And Kritika is the sword. So I like that it's starting in that Kritika vibe. Now, that means that if our partners are following us as we kind of let go of our attachments, as we let go of our home, as we travel to the temple, as we travel to the ashram, as we travel to the, our, you know, another country, another place, then this could be one of the most beneficial times for you and your beloved. But again, I always say that either the partner is growing with you, which means towards you, or the partner is stagnant and you're growing, which means you're growing away from the partner. So it's just something to consider over this time that you're receiving full support from the partner in your spiritual evolution, or it may be a time to get therapy with the partner. I, I never, 
support divorce unless you know I unless the person is unhappy or abused and has tried to work on the marriage but it's something that it's important to consider over this time even if you have a girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever it may be that you're able to uh not have codependency that you're not you're able to not have attachment at this time and that the partner is supporting that or it can be challenging time because of the 12th house 7th house relationship the last thing I will discuss today is also that 10th house activation for the Gemini ascendancy. When that 10th house activation, this will be a good time for the expansion of the career for the Gemini ascendant. But it's possible, like hypothetically, you know, depending on the chart of the native, they can get job in other state. They can get job in other country. They can get job in other district, other territory, other places, because the Jupiter in the 12th house is encouraging a transformation and letting go of our home and our physical location, because the 12th house is that relocative energy. I know this through many studies of astrocartography as well. So when you're looking at this 10th house activation, it's very important to understand, oh, I have job opportunity in another state, in another country. I have to take it which means I have to let go of my attachment to this physical location, right? And it's it's also, you know, with that energy, it can be very expansive in the career uh, over the course of this next year for the Gemini Ascendant. But again, we can't be too attached to what we want our career to look like. We can't be too attached to where we want our career to be because sometimes God's dream for us is better than we could ever dream for ourselves. Um, yeah. I want to give every time to every equal time to every ascendant. Uh, so that's all I'd be sharing today. And I want to thank Navjeet for supporting and sharing this time with me. Thank you so much, Nav. And thanks to Dr. Thank Pop. So thank you so much, Shanati, for this wonderful presentation. And I'm looking forward to from Cancer to Scorpio and our third. And I think we should do another one too over each planet. Maybe the fourth video. <laughs> I love it. Again, yeah. uh, as Nav knows, and we, we discussed this, uh, coming back from the grief, I am so excited to be doing weekly or, uh, you know, every two weeks, uh, you know, I'll be producing uh, exciting content for Dr. Pai's channel, and we'll be doing many videos together. So I'm so excited. Thank you. And you wanted to mention about the conference, right? Oh, okay. thank you for reminding me, Nav. So again, um, for those of you that aren't aware, I am the uh, host for the Parashara Conference. The Parashara Conference is uh, a continuation of the Sedona Conference, which Dr. Dennis Harness and Vamadeva started uh, many, many years ago. There's no greater blessing uh, than receiving their blessing to continue the conference. Uh, I have found that it is best to uh create the conference as virtual, right? That way people from all over the world can join. Hopefully in some years we can create hybrid conference when it is both virtual and in person. But for now, so that everyone can attend and we can have astrologers from all over the world, um, we are going to be doing it virtually. It's from November 21 to 25. And wow, I just wanna share the faculty with everybody. So of course, Dr. Pai will be there, but we also have Sanjay Roth headlining this year, Sarbani, his beautiful and lovely wife also will be doing a uh, wonderful presentation. Sada Siva, Dr. Harness, Dr. Pai, uh, Camilla Suttonji, Dr. Foss, Alan Anand, Narasimha, PVR, uh, Freedom Cole will be joining us, Vanita Lenka of VL Astrology. We have Dr. Malini Ayer, Dr. Dharmesh Mehta, Barry Rosen, Anandashri, Raman Suprajama, uh, the grandson of Bibi Raman, Simon Chukoisky will be joining us this year. We have Visti and Bronca Larson. We have Charlotte Benson. Uh, we have Pandit Sama Vidula, who's going to be doing a Navagraha Puja. Aditya Togi and Kanhola Santip will be there, of course. My dear friends, uh, Pasha, uh, Ronnie Dreyer, Tulsi Bagnoli, uh, Christina Escamilla, Jane Ann Thomas, Elise de Villiers, uh, Rade Holm, Nandita Patel, Joey Buhold, Bhavani Dashi, Satsira Khalsa, and uh, Katerina Dimitrova. And the, the real focus of this year is uh, the next generation of Jyotish. And so you can see that there are many wise Jyotish who have been practicing for many, many years, as well as their disciples. 
And it's so important that the disciples are here to continue this carrying of Jyotish for more generations. So I love the combination of the teachers and the students. I will be having some students, as you can see, Dr. Pai will be having students. Eve Mendoza has sent her students because she has retired, um, as well as uh, um, uh, Sanjay Roth has many students, which will be there. Um, you know, uh, so uh, Dr. Pai's students. So very, Sam Jeppy also is having some of his students. So I'm very excited for this year. You can go on the website and it's still early bird registration. You can see the schedule, you can see the class descriptions. So I hope for those that are not aware with the Parashara Conference will be joining us this year because this is one of my most exciting and favorite year. This is the third year. So I'll be happy everyone who uh, will attend this year. And thank you again for reminding me to share that, Nat. Of course, thank you. Thank you so much. And I will be coming back with our second um, video soon. Thank you. And we'll be posting, this is, we'll post an Aries to, we did Aries to I'm, Gemini, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you, Shanaji. Adiós, om namaste.